Listen, let's let's get into the real meat and potatoes of the podcast. Um, first impressions of Summer League, and um, what do you see that people are overreacting to that they definitely shouldn't? And then what do you think that people are not paying attention to that they should? Um, overreacting to – I mean, a lot of the performances, I mean, we, we pretty much saw everything – that we weren't really, we weren't really surprised at at, at much. Keegan was a bucket. Uh, Paolo was a man child. Um, Jabari was in the top three value. Um, I say hey, I said that right. Did I not say that for the draft? Um, but I do think Jabari does have value as like a three and D. Should go back to OT. Defender. He should go to OT. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> You know what? He's someone who would do terrible at OTE because he can't dribble. Oh my god! Yeah, you got to be able to dribble at OTE. OTE you is like, be able to like get your own shot. Yeah, bro. Like he needs structure. OTE, it's over. No structure. <laughs> no structure at OTE, dog. Can it's play like defense, open run. Though. It's like open run with uh, YouTubers. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Wait. So, and let me ask you. Let me ask you. Hard hitting oh, question. Wow. <laughs> Who's the worst commentator you've heard on OT? Like, hands down, the worst. Who's the worst? Yeah, the worst. Hands down, head and shoulders. I the swear, worst. it was like, it was like Agent and this other dude. And I I watched for like 30 seconds as I was like, uh, I can't do this. I, uh, I can't do it. What the but other guy look like? like? I feel like we would know him. I just couldn't Wait, do did it. his name start with a K? Um, He was, he was a dark skin dude. And he he had like brownish blonde hair on top. Davis. 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 <laughs> it was Davis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was Davis. It was Davis. I hate y'all so much. It was Davis. Hey, it was no disrespect because because you know, like look, they were they were having they were having fun. It was inter- it was entertaining, but like 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 from like a hoop head, like that's not what I was trying to watch, you know. I was trying to watch hoop and you know, it was like a cartoon. <laughs> okay. It's just the way you describe OT. Yeah. So yeah. 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 I barely even know what this shit is, and it's crazy. No, no disrespect, man. No no disrespect. So, I don't know why calling a cartoon makes it feel so much more disrespectful. Like, I can watch yeah. these niggas that still crazy. make it look like cartoons. Hey. So, so, look, so who do? You, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, but it's sorry. No, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get this off. No, I look. So, um, you saw what you saw what Chet can do. You saw what um, you saw some of his you saw some of his faults as well. Um, you saw you saw some pretty pretty okay college players. Uh, come out and earn some money. Jabari Walker, I thought he he had an okay final year at Colorado, and he ended up going to the NBA Summer League, and you know, he averaged well, like twelve and nine. He ended up signing for three years and almost five million. So um, some dudes made some money, and some dudes didn't. A dude like JD Davison, he was a lottery pick coming into college. He ended up tripping. I heard he was. Uh, uh, not a great teammate at, at uh, Alabama and ends up dropping to like the mid 50s and signs a two way contract. And I just see Jabari Walker get drafted below him and he's able to get five million over three years. So, you know, some dudes earn, earn some money. That's that's why I like the summer league because, because dudes are going, dudes are like playing for their lives. And and I enjoy seeing that because they know that this next you know nine ten days this could be their last chance ever. So yeah. these dudes are you know, like going out there and they're trying to make the right plays, make the right passes. And some dudes are out there with guaranteed money already, so they're targets. How do they handle that? Being targeted by someone who's been in and out of the league the last two three years, and um, a lot of them played very well. Very, very well. Tari Eason looked like a beast for the Rockets. He looks like the like their best pick, in my opinion. Um it was a lot of fun, man. It was a lot of fun, bro. A lot of fun to watch. Who's who's making immediate impact like on court next year for their respective NBA team? 
Oh, Paolo. Paolo for sure. Um, he's just some, he's just some, he's just he's just a like people don't understand how big he is, dog. So like pause. But like he's though know, you're talking about someone who is six, ten and a half without shoes. Charlie Damn. Shot. Got that dog in him for real. He got that dog in him for real. <laughs> he got that dog. Is, is Jason Tatum a good comparison for Paolo or no? Yes, yes and no. Yes and no. He's like a I've always said that Paolo Bancaro is open gym Mike Beasley. Oh like, shit. Oh shit. Well, like, you know, well. Like open gym Mike Beasley, like, like open gym Mike Beasley is one of the most unstoppable dudes I've ever seen in my life. Like no one gets him up off the court. And he'll talk the whole time and he'll like make up a new phrase every time. Can I ask, um, outside of Kenny Lofton? Who had a history with Chet? Um, what guys kind of exposed Chet for being too small? I couldn't catch as many Thunder games as I wanted. I caught a few. I saw a lot of good things I liked from Chet. Um, I, I seen things that I knew would be a problem address themselves with certain guys, the guys the size of Kenny that was able to do that to him. But I also saw him do like a lot better than I assumed he would do, handling that type of adversity and doing stuff like that. Yeah, so I mean, you have someone like Kenny Lofton, who's about six seven, big dude, big dude, right? Guys like that who have, who have been undersized, non athletic their whole life. Those are the toughest dudes to guard. You know, those are the toughest dudes because because like they've been working on how to finish over athletic and taller players their entire life. You know, um, <laughs> this sounds this sounds wild, but like. Going back and watching Kenny Lofton's buckets on Chet, y'all remember that that uh flight versus Cheeseaholic game, where like he yes. just kept going left. Yeah, yeah he kept yeah, going yeah. left. Yeah, that game, that game. He yeah. beat him like 15-0, even though flight had him by like a foot, but he just couldn't figure it out. It was the it was the same exact thing. He would use a long step, he dip his shoulder, he get the space, left hand every single time, and um that. That was fun. But outside of that, uh, Chet's got to work on his ability to guard quicker players on the perimeter. Um, he doesn't have a really good stop and go defensively. So, so like, these guards who are really quick, like like a like an Ish Smith, like a Jordan Clarkson, like guys who are really quick with the basketball, real quick, real quick, fast twitch and all that, they will go downhill and then stop on a dime. He's not stopping on a dime yet to contest. He kind of just keeps going back. Now you have un have an uncontested jumper. So um, he's got to work on his feet and, of course, his uh, strength for sure. But you don't think that with what you said about guarding the faster guards that are attacking going down speed, things like that, with the mobility that he does have, and, yes, he does like that stop and go ability, but he does have good feet for a seven-footer that's trying to protect the rim. Do you yeah. see that as something that comes a lot quicker for him or something that takes him a little bit to get? Because you know what bigs in the league, when they get to the league, as an adjustment period, a lot of the guys that were seen as defensive bigs, rim protectors, they figure, they're trying to figure out how to guard these guys. These are the best athletes in the world trying to limit the fouls and just learn the game. Do you think this is a two-year thing and it's like, all right, check, got this down, or this is going to continuously be a problem? Well, he's going to have a lot of playing time because OKC is dirt. So he's going to be able to play a lot of minutes. And a lot of people don't have that type of luxury in year one. When you look at someone like uh, Book Knight, right, for the Hornets, you know, last year people was, were very high on him. He didn't play that much. Why? Because, like, he had a bunch of veterans in front of him, and he didn't really get that much time on the court. But when you have someone like Chet, he's, you know, he may start and he may play 25, 30 minutes in year one to where he's going to get, you know, some games where, you know, he's just getting dogged. But, like, down the road, that's just going to help him out so much. It's going to help him out so, so much, so, so much. Um, and his feet, like, def defense in the league is tough because everyone's a bucket, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of understand where player spots are. He's going to have to scout pretty hard. Uh, he's going to have to understand, like, okay, hey, I'm going to pre prevent this three, but at the same time, I'm not giving up a layup. I'm going to take 
a, like a mildly contested 15 to, to, to 9 foot to, to a 19 foot mid-range jumper, which is a low value shot. And you got to hope that they hit three out of eight, three out of nine from there. So um, he should be all right. He should be all right. I'm I'm surprised you didn't mention him, but why why didn't you mention um baby Dwight Howard in Detroit? I like Jalen Duran. I like Jalen Duran. Um I forget I'm I'm pretty sure I said that like 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 with like him and Charlotte was unsure if it was gonna be Mark Williams or Jalen Duran end up being Mark Williams. Um Jalen Duran, I mean you're talking about someone who was 18 until I believe November 30th or something. Um, real good player, good passer. He's got, he's got, so he's got a lot of potential. Um, still like he's probably got some of the slower feet. And a lot of that could be because of the fact that, you know, he is a bit, he is a bit younger and he still has to get used to his body. Cause he's like, dude is like you said, he's, he's built, like he's bigger than what Dwight was coming out of high school. So, um, I like his game a lot. I like his game a lot. Uh, he has shown to be able to hit a mid-range jumper, uh, and he's going to be big enough to um, to uh, to go against a lot of the the true bigs in the league for sure. Thanks for watching. Let's keep it a buck. If you like that clip, go ahead, check out this video right here on your screen and we'll catch you on the next one.